What if you could take CO2 emissions, stick them down a hole, and turn them into something harmless? Like, I don't know, a rock. Sound far-fetched? Scientists in the borehole building at Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory are working on it. Marine geologist Angela Slagle and her colleagues at Lamont, David Goldberg, and Taro Takahashi published a paper this week suggesting that deep beneath the sea floor in the Pacific Ocean may be a good place to store carbon emissions. We were looking at the Juan de Fuca plate, which is a, a tectonic plate off the coast of uh, California, Washington, Oregon. Juan de Fuca has a couple of things going for it. It's pretty close to shore. We know a lot about it from previous drilling studies. And the seafloor there, like in most places, is made up of a special rock called basalt. And one of the benefits of carbon sequestration in basalt is the potential for long-term, permanent, uh, non-toxic storage. Permanent because the basalt changes the CO2, and once it's changed, it won't leak out. Let's see if we can imagine what this drilling might look like with the aid of some breakfast cereals. So we're talking about going down 2,700 meters or more in the ocean. At least 200 meters of sediment cover on the seafloor. Then you hit basalt, but it's not the right kind. Drilling in this area has shown that the first layer of basalt is solid. It doesn't have any pore space, so you keep drilling. Until we got to a, a layer of basalt that we know has some porosity, some pore space. And that pore space is currently filled with pore waters. Okay, so you hit the right basalt. Now you take CO2, highly pressurize it so that it becomes a liquid, and you pump it down. Which mixes with the pore waters to form carbonic acid. And the second step is that the carbonic acid reacts with the basalt and releases magnesium and calcium. And the magnesium and calcium from the basalt reacts with the uh, carbonate from carbon dioxide from the injected fluid to form solid carbonate minerals. And that's the equivalent of something like chalk or limestone. Once the CO2 is turned into chalk, it's permanently changed, the researchers say. And you can basically put it down there, and once it's in that stable form, you can walk away. The scientists estimate that it would take hundreds of years for this reaction to happen. But that might be a good thing. If the reaction happened too quickly... You would quickly clog up all the pore space immediately surrounding your injection site and you wouldn't be able to take advantage of that vast reservoir that's available there. Basalt doesn't just exist on the sea floor. In fact, a colleague of Slagle's, Jörg Motter, has run sequestration tests in a basalt borehole in Lamont's backyard. This is it. But there are a few extra protections when you're sequestering at sea. At the depths we're talking about, thousands of meters below the sea floor, this CO2 is actually denser than the over overlying seawater, so it's going to stay down there simply by gravity. You also have a physical trap of impermeable layer of sediment that's covering the injection area. Plus, if any CO2 escaped at those temperatures and pressures at the bottom of the sea, it would turn into a slush called hydrate. So again, it's denser than seawater, it's going to stay where you put it. The other thing Wanda Fuca has going for it is its size. You could store between 130 and 150 years of U.S. carbon emissions. Seems like a lot. It does seem like a lot. And that's, that's one of the reasons we think oceanic basalt is, is really a place you've got to look. That vast capacity is too big to ignore. The big caveat here is that this is still hypothetical. To know the exact reaction rates and really understand how this would work, they'll have to drill down, pump, and see what happens. They're working on a grant to do that now. For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.